Hi class, welcome. We're doing a feed on YouTube for class now. Um, hopefully in the future I'll have a live feed and you guys can reply with comments and throw some verbal tomatoes at me through the keyboard. Um, right now this is just uploaded. It takes 24 hours to vet me, make sure I'm not weird. Might take a little longer, so we're just gonna bear with that. Uh, I was um, kind of disappointed. I wanted to meet with the people that were here in town, but as it is, um, we're on lockdown and I think it's important to be safe and I want you guys all alive. I don't wanna die myself, so uh, I think not getting sick is important, but also um, in the isolation to sort of know that we are still a group of artists that, that love art and we have a, a common commonality as humans and being isolated kind of, it sort of sucks. So we're gonna keep having class I'm not gonna use this as a soapbox. We're just gonna paint, that's what I do. Uh, I'm not gonna go all Hollywood on you and all of a sudden become a theologian. I'm just gonna paint, okay? And we're gonna have fun and I'll keep you up to date and we're gonna get through this. So, moving onward, uh, we're gonna paint some chickens and I thought we would just move and do something on the heads so that we can work on some brush work. Hopefully you guys all have enough paint. Um, you might have to call Amazon I don't know if they deliver right now, but what I did right now is I set up kind of the value pattern of two chicken heads, kind of laid in some darker tone because they're going to be white and I need something dark to actually put them on. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this chicken on the left. So this is my important chicken. And this one is my complimentary chicken over here. So once I start painting this, I'll know what this is going to do. So I'm going to zoom in so you don't see me at the back of my head and all that weirdness in my ear. And I'll start painting and you guys can follow along. Remember, this is going to be kind of rough for a little bit. Maybe I can get Vince to come in and help me, right? He can kind of oh, zoom right in there. Okay. So first things first, Excuse my reach. And I've emailed you guys these images. I'm gonna set the hardest value and color right out the, right out the gate. Um, kind of drew this in already so I know where things are at. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna place its beak. Why is it the hardest? Uh, it's yellow and it's high key. That meaning that the value is lighter. Um, and I want it to be rich. Now, Terry, I don't have any gloves on right now because I have to work the camera. The COVID don't get me, the paint thinner will. This is the only art Florida has had since 1907, what I heard from Sunny yesterday. Hope she's doing well. Um, I heard from Marilyn down in Tucson, enjoying the sun. She's healthy. I think Mary's not too far away. So I said that, is the drawing, am I dead on right now? I wasn't working on drawing, I was working more so on getting the, the color that I wanted. And now I'm gonna start building around that. We often try to take on too much. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put red down. Just like an undertone of red, soft. It's my next color that I'm really kind of worried about. I like, you know, I want to have a nice red. Okay. Kind of have to hustle on video. The live feed, the, the downside of doing something like this is that the editing takes forever. So the live feed's better, but you also have to bear with me as I'm struggling along here. 
Um, So those things are, I feel like, are in pretty much the right spots. Um, I'm not going to worry about the white up here yet. It's already white enough. I'm going to dial in this eye. Um, and I have enough framework out here to start small. Sometimes if you would rather have white everywhere and just start with the eyeball, you could do that. Um, it's a little more daunting, a little scarier because you don't know you know, how it is or what the relationship is to everything else around you. Something like this, I kind of know I'm, I'm kind of in the right spot. I'm going to be okay. It's a little too bright. I want the, I want the brightness right there. Now remember, when we paint eyes, I think we often want to paint, overpaint the actual eye itself and not what's around the eye. For me, like, I really want to come in here and start adjusting this and get it, like, better, 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 better. But I think probably what's going to happen is if I can build up the paint strokes around it, the eye will all of a sudden form. So let's get, let's get this first, this first stroke in. She's got a little attitude. Ain't no doubt about it. She's got some attitude. Now, today's lesson when I sent over the email was for juicier brush strokes or we want to, and it's nothing new. I always, I'm harping on you guys to do basically mix, put down two strokes. So you, you aren't seeing the mixing in this video. Maybe I'll get a double feed. Uh, I'll work on it. I got a guy that might be able to help me. And um, you guys can see what I'm mixing at the same time. That's a possibility in the future. But as you mix and you only put down two strokes, the idea is that the paint's going to be thicker. And so you're pushing the paint for the drawing. So you're just going to push that in. Now I'm going to pull. I'm not really talking about value or temperature or anything because today is more about the paint itself. So I'm going to push this, push it in, admit that, get it to squish together, let it make some fun, cool stuff. Um, I'm using a full palette. You guys can use whatever you want in this situation. It's not imperative that you have every color under the, other, under the planet, but I think it's more important um, how thick your paint's going down. Now, if you put, I'm going slow, you notice how slow I'm going? Now you get to see actually how I paint at home. Um, I'm really pushing that paint, letting it do something. Ooh, that's gross. That's juicy. When you lift, the paint's thick, dimensional, it's going to cast the shadow down, which is going to help um, make it look like a painting. You have to ask yourself, why the heck am I painting? Like, if, it, if you're using paint, you want it to do something for you. If not, you could be drawing or you could be using a different medium, gouache. Um, I think Marilyn said she was using some gouache down there uh, in Arizona. Dr. Terry Spindler, he's got everything. Actually, he's, his, he's got all the paint. Don't go to Amazon, call Terry. He'll probably set you up. Though he does charge. If anybody's bought an easel from him, you know he's got the goods. Throw you under the bus, Terry. You can't do anything about it. We're all alive. Okay, so I'm going to come in and get one more color. There we go. Now, this is set to kind of the value I want. The value I want a little darker, anticipating the way that I paint, that I'm going to come in and cut in these uh, other angles. 
um, now if you don't paint that way and you want to be you want to draw more that's good that's a great way to go um, I make a lot of mistakes so I kind of I kind of know I'm gonna have to clean up my mess it also gives me the freedom to have a little not not be so tight but to be able to move around um, I want to get this they say that the ears are the, the color of the eggs right there um, That really matters. I don't know. They all taste the same. I'm gonna darken this up. I'm gonna grab a little blue, a little brown. Darken that up. Now, with texture, as we get the paint, and we were trying to put it on a little bit thicker. Uh, I'm in the area of importance, right? I'm in the MPI. Why is that, why am I saying that? Why is that important? Because if I was in the background putting a heavy amount of, of texture down, it's very possible it'd be distracting, right? It'd be like, he wouldn't, it'd be weird. Okay, so, okay, let me, let me expand, expand on that. So the, if you put the texture in the background, your eye's gonna go to the texture. It's gonna go to the coarse area, not to the smooth area. Um, so you want to push the paint back and forth. So right now we're building up the texture and in the background we can have it more thin. I'm going to do this right now because that little voice that we are working on training in our head said, hey, you remember that green I put in here? When I looked up there, I actually noticed, and you'll look in your photograph, that I, the photograph that I sent you, that there is just a little bit of green right by his eye. Oh, that's cool. Um, and those are those little notes that we're looking for um, in our reference that, you know, you, maybe you don't see it when you're in the, the chicken yard picking up eggs or uh, maybe at first you don't see it, but as you sit there, I'm going to make that a little more purple. Uh, when you sit there and you look at a reference long enough, you start to see the unifying things, whatever they might be. It might be um, a geometric shape. Of a fence, it might be a color, it might be a, a limited palette or values. It's those little things that kind of really bring it all together for you. Um, cool. I'm gonna put a little down here uh, and then I'm gonna come up there. So here, this is gonna be warmer light coming here, which is why I put the darker, cooler background. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna say to my, in my head, like this is gonna be warmer, this is gonna be kind of shadowy and a little bit cooler. So I'm gonna mix it up as such. I couldn't, I couldn't go too long without talking about warm and cool. Now that was a mixture of cobalt and viridian. And I just grabbed a little bit of yellow ochre, a little more viridian. I, it's a grayish color. Um, yeah, that'll work. What, what I'm trying to do because there's always a method in my madness, is that I want my, my light values here, that this is our main point of interest, I want to, that to be as rich as possible. Um, if, if I have to push this to pure white, if, I, if I'm competing with other values that are too, too light, one being white, um, what I keep doing is adding white, piling on white, piling on more white, thinking that it's gonna get better, but this is actually a rich, warm yellow, very organic, obviously it's alive, but um, 
she's still alive. <laughs> the raccoons that haven't gotten her yet. Um, in fact, she's my lifeline. I've got to get, get I gotta better lock them in. I want I got eggs coming from those suckers. My neighbors might jump the fence and try to steal my chickens. Or my toilet paper, I'm not sure which one. Um, okay, so we got that. Now I can come in. We want to, I'm gonna start with a little bit cooler area. We wanna think texture with our eyes. Like how, how can I make this feel soft? I'm hoping you guys have your reference up and you can kind of follow along because I'm not showing you what I'm painting from. Uh, it's gonna help a lot to see how I'm I'm doing this. Um, I didn't start with the white. Did you notice that? I didn't jump in and the first thing our mind goes is, oh, she's got a white head. So I gotta, I gotta really get in there on the white. I'm gonna wait on that. I'm gonna try to get the other colors in first um, that are not white, so that when I do put the white in, it's, it's gonna really pop. You did see me, I was doing a little bit of, I'm kind of rolling. What that's doing is I'm kind of, I'm pushing the paint, smushing it into each other to limit my hard edges. If I had, if I was a filbert painter, this is almost a filbert. If, if I was using a round, it would leave less hard edges. Um, so then what I would say to the video, because there's nobody in the room, is Kyle, why don't you use round brushes? I don't know. <laughs> I don't use them because I don't like too many variables. I like a higher rate of success. And if I'm searching all the time for what brush to use, Oh, you hear the girls out there? Um, if I'm always searching for the, which, which brush I'm supposed to be using, it's just one more thing for my little brain to, to, to take in, and I'm not that smart. I, gotta, I just need a, a high rate of success, and that's by limiting my variables. Um, it's actually kind of funny that you can hear my chickens as they probably have laid an egg. Now, uh, we didn't talk about the composition at all. As I'm painting this, uh, I'm gonna just talk a little bit about the competition, the competition, the, the composition. Um, I didn't, I thought their heads were really fun to look at, so that was kind of where I was going with it. Um, versus the whole body, I've painted some of these uh, with the whole body. Um, so I don't, it's not like I can't paint it, it's not like, I don't think painting just the heads is a is a cop out, but it definitely isolates. Well, it's a, that's an ugly word. Am I even allowed to use the word isolate any longer? That's going to be like a swear word. Um, it it definitely puts focus on the heads, whereas if you have the full body, it take it's there more there are more moving parts, which makes the composition more difficult. So this would be an easier composition. But even though it's easy, I still want low and then I want high exit. I want to have um, my light chicken that's going to be on a darker chicken. Ooh, that's pink. Grab a little pink in there. I'm still, as you guys are seeing, I'm still kind of almost thinking what is underneath this like right here, what's underneath the top feather? I'm gonna put the white on what? Now you don't, I guess if you wanted to, you could let this dry and then come back over. I don't see any reason for that, but some people, if you wanted to have a little more time to think about and design, um, the beauty about using thick paint is that you, it'll blend right on here. Okay. So after I put all this in, I realized that I could probably go a little bit darker there. 
Notice how I'm going darker right now in the white area instead of whiter, tastier. Spring break, nobody wants to be pasty. Now, I haven't watched any uh, Mark Boja's videos, but we do have a, a uh, fellow friend, student, Rathramite, who traveled to the, the sunny south to take a, a class. So I'm waiting to, to learn something from her. Uh, hopefully, maybe she'll post some videos of her experience. I actually like him as an artist a lot. If you don't know who he is, Mark Boges. I think it's a phonetic spelling. I don't think it's too hard to find him online. He does kind of a Richard Schmidt-esque type of uh, East Coast deal where beautiful barns, rocks, great designer. Um, don't know him personally, so I don't know if he's a good guy, but I like his art. Okay, so now as I as I'm going, I still want to. I still am saving this right now. I'm kind of moving away a little bit, and I want to kind of add a little bit. I'm still trying to put more. So when I put this in, it has more punch. It's disappointing when you put that white stroke in and it does nothing. <laughs> You're like, oh dang. I guess uh, I needed to paint more before I got to that highlight to the, to the frosting. No music today either. That might be nice in the background or not. I guess it depends on who you are, if you like my music or not. I think we'll be okay if we just do this for right now. I'm gonna add a little, add a little green. Um, as you're thinking about unity in your painting, green, green. I just want to throw a little, little green down there. If if you have a poor photograph or um, you want to spice it up a little bit, you're kind of looking for those things. I, I could put a little more here to kind of flare out its head and I could suck this in, but I'm, I'm going to wait on it till, till now. Okay. Now. We're going to think about this, not as this, but as kind of this round head. And when we're thinking like that, we want to see where, we want to see where the high point is. Like what part would touch, like that's going to be closest to me. If you think that way, then you'll start seeing that way. If you just look at it, you're going to copy it flat. You're going to have to do a little bit of unflattening because it's a photograph, which is how it is. Um, so it goes this way and it goes this way. So I'm going to use my brightest. jump back and make sure that the video was still working. Wouldn't that suck if it turned off and I was just talking to myself? <laughs> I, mean, I might be talking to myself anyway. Uh, but I said earlier, I said you could, you could wait if you wanted to and um, kind of like let it dry and then go over it. There are, there are reasons for that. There are techniques for that. I, like as I'm painting this, uh, depending on the type of canvas you use, sometimes it just won't take any more paint, right? It's frustrating. You're like, ah, I keep putting the paint down and it keeps sucking it right off. Like 
now I, now I see I'm a greasy old mess. Um, this brush strokes going to go this way. And I'm using uh, six, uh, Klassen 66, which is pretty standard. Everybody uses it. Nobody special. It's a, um, it's a landscape linen. It has, it has a coarse, coarser medium texture. So it has, it'll, it'll hang on to the paint. You can kind of go at it pretty hard. Uh, if you're somebody who likes a really smooth canvas, you got to be careful because it's going to get greasy on you real quick. Uh, it's going to, the bonus is the paint will build up quickly with little paint. Like it'll look like you put a lot of paint on so you can kind of be uh, chintzy and still look like you're doing it. Um, the other thing that happens is you can, if like me, like to erase their mistakes, you can come in and you can pull out. Where this doesn't pull out as easy, you kind of like stuck with it. Um, so you, now this, I'm just going to bring that together. Uh, notice that in my bag of tricks, I'm, I am using a number four a lot. Uh, I've moved up to a six. I haven't jumped into my um, my palette knife yet. I know there are some of you guys that love working with the palette knife. Um, it gets pure color down. It's a nice technique. I think uh, I think the palette knife is a great tool to use when you get to the end or you're painting and you're getting to the finish you, it's good to know that you don't have to leave all your palette knife strokes you can go in and adjust them a little bit okay so just like the just like the eye where we we painted around the eye to create the eye we're going to do the same thing with the hair so i was kind of painting the in the interior the interior area and now I'm going to go and paint the, the exterior so that I can finish the interior but before I do that I'm going to come in well, we can do a little better than that I think oh. yes my thumb is still broken got to the doctor just in time I'm gonna finish the eyeball out so it'll be easier to to look at give a little shine I'm gonna push the paint. I know this is so, I can't, I mean, it's slow. Ain't no doubt about it. So as, as I come in here, I put that little white stroke in. I'm gonna push it with with the dark. Uh, I. It's hard to know sometimes which, you know, do you add more white, do you erase it? With paint, When you have paint on there, you can actually do some, some pushing um, instead of actual drawing. And when you're pushing the paint around, it, it's almost easier. When you don't have any paint and you're, you're kind of, you know, I don't want to say chintzy, but you're like, ah, you know, I don't know if it's the right stroke, so I'm not going to put a whole bunch on there. And that makes it harder on you. There's that, that, that. Well, let's get this beak under control because that's ugly. Um, we are going to do, I'm kind of doing a comprehensive lesson today. I don't know how long we are. I don't want to go too long because we're at about half an hour. I'm going to go into the five minutes because I don't know if I can upload this. So what I'm going to do now is try to finish this out to an appreciable state. 
And what we see when we have a photograph is we see it flat, one shape on this shape. What I want you guys to start thinking about is that there's air around there. So how do I do that? What do I, first I'm gonna establish my drawing, which is the harder thing. I'm gonna establish this. And then after I establish this area, because this is the most important of the head, the beak area, once I establish this, then out here, which is not gonna do a whole lot of anything, this is easier to make this look good. This is gonna make this look good, and then this is gonna make this look good, and I'll, I'll show you. I'm gonna move up to, uh, this is a number six, a little bit bigger brush, nothing, I'm not gonna jump off the, the bridge or anything here, we're just gonna go a little bit bigger, because I still need control to manipulate my drawing. Let's see how that looks. We'll go, it's not bad, it's not bad, not bad, not bad. So I want this to be darker than that, which it is, see that? Um, and I want, I think somebody, sh somebody should shop through their, their video screen, how do I choose this color? You may see me paint left-handed, that's not gonna work, I don't think. Um, it's not gonna work. So how do I fix this, pick this color? I'm going up against yellow, so I mixed it so it had kind of a purple I pulled off that yellow. Can you see that on the brush? So I'm gonna wipe that out. I wanna be, be sure I'm not contaminating. Um, I wanna clean it up. I wanna make it look like when I put the brush stroke in for the beak that it just went down one stroke. Not all these, <laughs> not all these strokes that I've been struggling with to get this thing to work. Um, I mentioned uh, a couple weeks ago in class, you know, I used the word magic. Uh, somebody called me out on that and I you know it does you want this to look you want your paintings to look Just about magical like how did that person get it to do that? Like how did the paint? Um, how, how did that person get that paint to make me think that it's a fill in the blank Because um, obviously I'm not really painting the chicken like this is not the chicken um, It's just the illusion of the chicken that was the uh, an eye opener, maybe to some of you guys a couple weeks ago, when I told you every stroke I put up there was wrong. Every single stroke is one stroke. This is that's, that's the wrong color, and it's the wrong stroke. But if I get all of them pretty close, all the wrong ones pretty close, it's gonna resemble what I'm going after. I'm not. What that does in my mind is it it releases me from trying to be perfect from trying to paint a perfect chicken and have fun with it because that's what people want to see. They want to see the fun color. Now, I don't want to see perfect. If they want it perfect, they just take the photo and put it on their wall. They want to see your interpretation of it. So these strokes, now I'm, now I'm kind of going around the edge of this thing and doing some, oh, why did that come out of the way? Now I'm kind of, um, drawing into it. I'm gonna grab my palette knife and show you kind of a, a different technique because I see it as um, possibly something you wouldn't have thought of. We're gonna come in and we're gonna, uh, normally our hands like this, right? Like we're trying to do this, but we can come in the other way and I want These little, if you're looking at your photo, you'll see what I'm doing right now. I'm not sure that's gonna do it. I want it to go a little bit darker. Let's go like this one. Okay, that's not doing exactly what I want. I'm gonna get some sharp lines in there because that's gonna help create softness elsewhere. 
if everything is soft, it's kind of hard to know what's soft and vice, vice versa. Um, that contrast is what's really going to benefit. And the palette knife has a tendency to leave hard edges. So that's what we're, we have to be careful of when we're using a tool as a crutch. Um, when you walk into a gallery and you're like, oh yeah, that's the person who paints with a palette knife. It's very one dimensional. Um, you want, as, as an oil painter, you want to be kind of like an orchestra conductor or a composer where you're taking all of the textures and putting them all into one beautiful piece of music. If you have a bucket, you can puke in it right now because I'm being gross, sorry. Uh, you want to be able to move, that's the point of oil paint, it has multiple textures. It has, has these really interesting things that it can do. Um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to finish this in a second, but I want to do something here because it's going to be important. We only got a couple minutes left. The, um, so I'm not one, I can use a palette knife. I actually do use my left hand a lot. I'm not going to be able to do that. So I'm going to improvise and, and I want on the top of this bird's beak, I actually want a line, like a darker line. And what that's going to do is going to make that a little more pronounced. And you go, well, crap, Kyle, you just put this huge dark thing in there. Um, that to me is, that's like, okay, well now that line is harder to create. So now I can come in from the outside and push into it and leave that dark line right up next to it. And now I don't have to bust out into a smaller brush. Does that make sense? Um, now I'm going to go into a little bit larger brush. This is a beautiful, I don't, I don't even have a number on anymore, 10. And I want to go from here to here. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow That's the back of the number 10. Um, it's going to make it look like there's air. Actually, I'm going to use a bigger brush because we got to get this done. So I'm just going to do a value thing a little bit maybe with the, with this big brush, it's harder to do texture, which is also kind of nice. It's going to be too red. I know it is. Still too red, maybe. A lot of mixing. I'm going quick, guys. Trying to. Okay, we're just about there. There it is. So just like we were doing the thought of that purple going into the yellow beak, trying to create that darker line without going in and busting into our uh, small brush kit, our model making brush kit or whatever. I don't know what people do with those little brushes, drive themselves crazy. Um, now we can come in and, and we can really kind of have fun with this. And remember I said, you want to make it look like it's magical, like it just happened, like it just, I mean, not as magical as Frozen 2 or anything, but you know, just, um, Oh, look at that hand with no glove on it. I'm going to get a bunch of hate mail. Um, now we're going to lose that edge. I'm going to brush into it a little bit. Um, and why I'm going to lose that edge is because it's going to soften as it rolls around the other way. I went darker. Uh, I'm always kind of talking about as we see things, we're gonna make it from dark to light or light to dark or dark to light. I don't care, it just needs to have some movement. Um, so in this one, I'm gonna go on the top darker and then as I reach in, get towards its body, I'm gonna kind of fall off into a, a little bit lighter, uh, a little bit of green on that. It just kind of makes it fun to look at. It, what, well, that's a 
cop out for telling you what it really does. It allows there to be more volume. Um, this 10 inches becomes bigger by doing dark to light and light to dark. So I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to darken this up out here. Green. Let me go back to that. Oh, there's a drip now. That's some of you guys like drips. I won't do it. Um, it's amazing what you can do with one of these big house brushes. They're really inexpensive. Um, it's like ten bucks. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in. You want to make it feel like that. Like if you want it to make it look magical in a way, like it. Magical is a horrible word. I shouldn't use that. It, you want to make it look like it fell off the brush. Make the strokes go. We're going to come back on top of that, obviously. Um, so, in closing, because if I go much longer, I don't think I'm going to get this onto YouTube. I think they're going to shut me down. I'm going to come back in. I don't mind that that's lost. What I am going to do... So you guys can kind of see what's what we can do in the body when you guys get to the body uh, of these birds is the outside lines uh, these outside pieces they're gonna they're gonna they're really gonna make it fun to look at these little flicks at the end if your paintings are flat and they're like ah um, I know there's a couple people that have kind of um, use this technique. It's not trademarked by me or anything, but if you just put a little on the outside, it's going to make it feel like it's turning. It's that it's the plane that faces out that we're not quite seeing. That's what I just painted. Um, and I usually put some fun colors there. You do what you like. You can just do values if you want. Uh, I'm going to lose that edge and then I'll, I'll find it right here. Does that make sense? Um, after the painting dries, you could go in and do little flicks here and there. Um, but beyond that, I think for my first demo during the Corona outbreak 2020, um, we're going to call it a wrap. Let me put, and there's always one more stroke, right? <laughs> I'll finish up this painting um, and I'll start posting some stuff. I've been really kind of just worried about making sure my family has food. I hope you guys are, all have enough food and are well taken care of. Um, if you're local here in Hayden, Idaho, uh, and you need to talk, you need to give me a call, you need something, I, uh, I don't really have a fear of getting sick myself. I'll go pick something up for you. Um, swing it by. Maybe I have, I have to go to Michael's, pick up some uh, oil paint. We could do that too. She's a little mean looking. So kind of wrap up, uh, I really appreciate you guys bearing with me. I know it's a little bit rough. It's not quite the same as class and I'm not used to doing the whole video thing, but I appreciate it. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll look forward to getting up on the live video chat. Maybe I'll do a couple videos over this next week and just do some more practicing. Thanks, be well.